Stockpile Hobbies. Welcome back to Stockpile Hobbies, everyone. So I pretty much finished off the drag strip install. We have all the right lights in place now. Trees in the right spot. Clock towers at the back. Looking good. And now we have to come back to our old friend, the racetrack. So what I bought is uh, a photo wall backdrop that a photographer would use to take pictures of people, you know, like a, like a, like a concrete wall. So I figured we'd lay that down as our foundation to, build, to put the racetrack on top of. And it's 10 feet by 6 feet, I think I purchased. It might be 10 by 8, but I think it's 10 by 6. So the, the track over there, I think, is 12 by 5. I think it's going to work. As you see, this is what our uh, ground will now look like instead of cardboard and shelving. We'll have this concrete uh, backdrop down everywhere. So now we have to get this pulled in under the track. And I do have two of them to span the entire length of this. When we come back, we'll see what it looks like. I'll even give it a snap. And about four hours later, here it is, all back together, looking good. I like the contrast between the track and the, the, the concrete look. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's almost like snow, but uh, I think it makes everything pop more. Uh, that's great. Uh, I was able to uh, use the seam here that I did, and you see there's a hard white edge. And what I did was I folded it over and taped it equal length. So there'd be no white edge going across the whole track. So it, it kind of camouflage a little bit better. You can see where I have my power cable coming out for the Slot Dragon 2 tower. Uh, there's the set photo sensor eye right there. And I have to re-add the Christmas tree. But, testing it out. It's working great. So happy. So now, let's continue on with the installation of the Slot Dragon 2 timing system. Alright, so for the Slot Dragon 2 installation... In my order, I received the tower display clock, the photo light eyes, and the racing trees. I added that to this, the track. I was doing a custom install here. If you didn't see any of the previous videos, I used to have the sick dragon installed over here. I simply took the tower off, left what was installed, so my photo eye is already installed, and the wires to where it used to be still exist. I'm going to replay some of the installation steps of me drilling the holes in the track here from my previous video. It's all the same stuff. You're going to find a nice piece of track you want to use and using the supply 2 millimeter drill bit, go ahead and mark where you want the, the installation to be. So I have a T-square here and my marks line up perfectly that I put on there previously so that side looks good. So I have a piece of wood under my piece of track and I got a, another drill bit. You can use a nail, whatever you want. But you want to indent the holes. This is so that when you do the actual drilling, the bit doesn't wander and you get a true hit. And we're going to take the 2 millimeter drill bit supplied with the instructions and drill the holes we marked. Go slow. Turn the light on for everyone. There you go. There we go. And repeat. I'm just going through and uh, picking off some of the extra plastic. Alright, I'm warming up the soldering gun because. I noticed that when I drilled my holes, the eyes, I have bent leads, so they're going to be come in a little bit of an L. And I want to make sure this channel here is flat for the wire to lay flat in there. So I'm going to take this down a little bit so that it's recessed uh, next to the slots. And to do that, I'm just going to do this. Lot looks good. Go. So with the way we have the track installed here, uh, the yellow lead 
is the far side of the track, which when looking at the tower should be the first position on the tower. Let's test that now. Reset it. Cover the yellow lead. And there we go. So the yellow lead is going to go into the left hole on the track. The black lead is going to go into the right hole. Flip this upside down now and install. So with the track flipped upside down, I'm also going to flip the entire lead upside down so that everything will be correct when we turn it back over. This still now lines up with this side. So, so the, the lead is it's in there. It's snug. It's holding in place. And it is below the track surface. Make sure that it's not poking through. Otherwise, it will get damaged. I'm going to do the same for the other side now as well. So now to make gluing easier, I'm going to use some packaging tape to temporarily hold everything in place. And that now looks like this. They're in there pretty good. And they are working. So you could actually even probably get away with just doing this. And I don't see it moving that much. I'm actually going to do that. If, now, if you were to glue this, you would add some glue right about here on both of them. But you also want to add some glue in the back. So if anything's tugged, it's not going to damage anything up here. It will pull here first as a, uh, as a preventative measure from pulling on the actual uh, glue near the eye. What I did is I poked a hole here and pushed the, the tape down all the way to help it stick better. Good. I'm just going to trim the edges now. Having now installed the photo eyes, I ran that wire under the track here to come out over here where I think I'm going to put the clock tower, maybe somewhere in this vicinity where it exists. I usually had, I think I had it right here before between the two uh, corkscrews or bends. Uh, this is the power wire for the clock tower. It's just coming up between the folds of the, the tarps and the, the shelving underneath, and that will plug in. The only other wire I have to run is for the optional starting tree here. The system supports both a Formula F1 style start and an NHRA style as well. So I'm gonna place the tower now and run uh, the Christmas tree wire as well to it and we'll come back to the system setup. So the system will come disassembled and as you see there's, there'll be two rods and a base. You simply insert. You can glue them if you want. If you did get the optional tree setup, this is what it will look like. It comes with also with a stand piece that you can Assemble. So I'm going to get this place on the track now and we'll come back. So I had Enzo come down and give me a hand with the placement of our new uh, Slot Dragon 2 tower and our tree. Uh, Enzo thought it was cool to put the tower in the center of the corkscrew. I happen to agree. That's very cool. I didn't think of that. So we're going to head it here and then working out my cable lengths. I did have to make one extension. I was able to have my tree here at the start where we used to have it before. I also have the photo eye start and finish sensors right here next to the tree as well. It's pretty good visibility. If there's a person here who has to uh, hit the button here to set the race off, he can see the tree from the back side. The other person stationed on the other side of the racetrack, they can see the tree from the front side as well. So now is a good time to remove the protective uh, sticker. And got everything plugged in, powered on, looks good. We are now going to calibrate the photo eyes. So now for the photo eyes, there's an adjustment here to calibrate it. It is recommended to have a light directly overhead. There's our LED light shining down. Uh, you can also opt to use little desk lamps here like I have that shine directly down. What's nice about this is if you wave your hand between, you know, over those lights and the track here, you won't set off the sensor. However, over here at the moment, if you should happen to reach across and do that, the shadow of my arm would trigger the sensor there. There's two calibration screws here, and you see the light just went off when I did the shadow there. The system kicked off. As I calibrate this, obviously I don't want to have a shadow over the, the photo sensors there, so I'm going to do from the side. Turn the adjustment screw all the way counterclockwise, and turn it clockwise until it shuts off, and then give it a quarter of a turn. Turn it clockwise all the way, and then I'm going to turn it back till it just turns off, and then give it a quarter turn. All right, so everything working. Uh, everything is calibrated nicely. You see everything reacting. So let's take a look at the, the tower over here. So once you power it on, the system will be in uh, race mode. And by pressing the mode button all the way on the left, there's five buttons going across here. Uh, mode, uh, set 
the number of laps you're going to do by 10, increase the number of laps you're going to do by 1, so you can do 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, example. Um, you can also set the display here that will cycle through the elapsed time, then I think it's the reaction time, uh, the best lap, uh, the average, and the average lap speed, I believe, as well, as you push that through. And then the reset just to kick off every race you're going to run. Uh, if you hit the mode button once, it puts you into a program mode. And this is where you could turn on both photo sensors or only one photo sensor. You just can't have them both turned off. So we are in the left lane. We're going to leave that turned on. Pressing the mode button one more time will take us into the start setup, which is why right now it's in drag race mode. So it will be an NHRA type of tree where it goes staging, yellow, green really quick. I don't remember what the timeout is, but it's very fast. It's actually better suited for my uh, drag strip over there. I'm thinking about moving the tower over over to the drag strip and getting another one of these for here. But you can also set it to the, uh, by hitting the source 10 button, you can set the F1 Formula 1 uh, start style. Oh, ball started. It's really hard to save. I can't ever uh, bump the car right. So I'd use your endos here to we save the card first, then you hit the button over there and trigger it. So we're two laps here. One. I mean, extra careful here not to crash. I want to do this in two, one take. There we go. I think the actual cycle is total time, reaction time, average lap, fastest lap. So I hope you like this video. For slot car of the week now, Enzo and I can do fastest lap times. We can do fastest drag times as well. Upgrade the cars, it's gonna be great, can't wait. So please give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please tell others to share it. And uh, keep having fun, everyone.